Hello, Bill Molino here for Bill's History World with Goober the Traveling Bear. And we are walking up to Pickett's Charge from the Union Lines. And I'm old and chubby and out of breath. But uh, we have left General Meade's headquarters. And we are walking up the path. And this is the second or third Pennsylvania Cavalry attached to Provost Guard Army Headquarters. All right. So we're, uh, gotta use your imagination, July 3rd, 1863, late afternoon. The Confederates bombard for an hour and a half. The artillery has heard the sound of the guns as far away as Baltimore and Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We'll pause here. I'll catch my breath and get over the ridge. All right, we have 12 pounder Napoleons, green barrels. Now, even on a Sunday at 10 in the morning, there are a lot of people on the battlefield. So we're heading over to Pickett's Charge. We're gonna see where Armistead, Kemper, Get Garnet cross the lines and the Kadori Farms in the background. All right, here we have George Gordon Mead, one heck of a big statue, sitting on some uh, raised ground. I'm not gonna read the inscription or anything, but he's looking across the battlefield. Now, I've posted videos on the Bliss Farm, and the Bliss Farm is Right about there, straight ahead. All right. We're gonna hit the uh, Armistead marker, the high tide marker, the crops of trees, and some limbers. All right, we're here at Pickett's Charge for the crops of trees are right there. These caissons are quite rare at uh, battlefields. Um, you don't see these a lot. You see limbers, but not often caissons. These carry the ammunition for the artillery pieces. And they're quite unique. Even miniature war gamers don't, uh, oh my gosh, it's Goober the Traveling Bear. He is everywhere. So miniature war gamers, they don't use these a lot either. Uh, just regular limbers, which is one of these attached to an artillery piece. But these are called the caissons. You also see these used for when a president passes away. And they do have a spare tire. They have the spare wheel back here. All right. Um, Today we're trying the uh, a different dead cat for the outdoor audio. Hopefully it's working. We'll find out later for my microphone. All right, here we are, the Union lines looking out to the Confederate lines. And there's the Virginia Monument a little over a mile out. Bliss Farm is on our right behind that tree. And our Union lines are here. Now, this is the three inch rifles and this is where the Confederates were stopped. The high water mark. Oh, so here's our monument. For the Confederates, General Armistead basically ended here. A thousand fell where Kemper led, a thousand died where Garnet bled over blind, through blinding smoke and remnants the batteries broke and crossed the works with Armistead. I screwed that poem up a little. I don't think I tried to recite it in over a decade. 
But uh, so this is our view of our three inch guns. And many say this is the high tide of the Confederacy. At the same time, Vicksburg is falling, which is a very big deal also. The Confederates uh, were aimed on that crop of trees right there. That was their target. And over there is the Kadori Farm. And General Pickett, that's where he, that's where he commanded the troops from. He didn't advance any further, and I'm not going to go into that debate. So, this is the High Tide of the Confederacy video, and I hope you, uh, you enjoyed it, and hopefully the audio won't be too bad. Well, here we are at the uh, Crops of Trees. We're going to hit this one monument really quick. Of course, it's uh, a high water mark. There we go. Very somber day. Well, we'll end this out with stay safe, be kind, and be courteous. And thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.